Well, hello there, boys and girls, and welcome to another exciting edition of Flip Class. Today, we're going to talk about not endosymbiosis at all. Instead, we're going to talk about cellular differentiation. This is the final lecture in our flipped unit, so be excited, because that means this is the final amount of information you need before the test. So you may have probably noticed that some of the cells are different from other cells, and so this is the process differentiation of how they become different from each other. And it's a pretty cool concept we're just going to go into it just a little bit because there's a whole lot of biochemistry involved that I don't really know a whole lot about. So we're just going to stay lighting at the surface. But so you'll notice here's some electron micrographs. You'll see that some cells, like this one over here, have a lot of different organelles, right? You have like the nucleus, and here you have a little bit of rough ER action. You can see like the little ribosomes all up on it. And over here, you have a red blood cell, which pretty much has nothing inside of it. What's really interesting, your red blood cells are so highly differentiated that really they have nothing inside of them. They're double membrane, cytoplasm, that's it. Their cytoplasm is full of this really cool protein, but there's no nucleus to be the instructions and there's no ribosomes to even make that protein. So how could they possibly be like that? I mean, this is a eukaryotic cell with nothing in it. So let's talk about how it got to be that way. First, we gotta get into the, cell, the whole making new cells. Your cells are only made from pre-existing cells. So a cell makes a new cell, which you're probably wondering, okay, a cell makes a new cell, it's gonna have to be the same type of cell. I mean, how could it just make a different cell? My liver cells, when they reproduce, they're uh, gonna make liver cells. But the really weird thing is, is that most of these cells actually cannot make more of themselves. Most of your cells are just sitting there doing their cell thing and they're too busy to be making more cells. Good example, your brain cells. I wouldn't want my brain dividing uh, hoping that it's busy like thinking. My heart cells shouldn't be making more heart cells because then I'd have to stop my heart from beating to do that. So it's really important that you recognize that not all cells can make new cells and that whole idea of the cells becoming different types of cells, that's called differentiation. So there are certain types of cells, they're called stem cells. They replicate and they go through this process called differentiation where they become different from each other. Only undifferentiated cells have the ability to do differentiation. So once my liver has become a liver cell, it can no longer turn into something else. Once my skin has become a skin cell, it can no longer go back and not be a skin cell anymore. What's really kind of cool is some scientists have found different ways that you can induce a cell into becoming undifferentiated again. But that involves, again, lots of biochemistry that we're not going to hit too hard on. So let's talk about multipotent cells. These would be stem cells. You've probably heard of them. There's kind of a controversial debate about We have multipotent cells. These are adult stem cells. They can turn into multiple types of cells. That's what it means to be multipotent. You've had these since birth, so really uh, the term adult is kind of misleading because as soon as you pop on out there, you're mostly adult stem cells. There's some still in your body, however there's a limited amount of things that they can become. In your stomach, there's a lot of different uh, undifferentiated stomach cells that can turn into different kinds of stomach cells. They can be ones that produce acid, ones that produce mucus, ones that turn into muscle, that sort of thing. Your bone marrow is another example where you've got different kinds of stem cells in there that can turn into different kinds of blood or muscle cells, but that's really about it. I mean, it's still pretty cool, but these are our adult stem cells. They're limited. In addition to that, they can only reproduce a certain amount of time. They differentiate based on these chemical signals that they'll get. So for example, your blood will detect that it's low in blood, send a signal on into the bone marrow that says, hey, make with the more blood cells when needed. But again, they can only get those signals from other existing cells. Here's an example down here of what we call a pluripotent cell. A pluripotent cell is a really cool kind of cell. Uh, because they're called embryonic stem cells. These are the ones that there's the controversy about, the embryonic stem cells. The reason why there's a controversy is because you can only get them from, well, you guessed it, human embryos. You get them around the time that they're eight cells. Here's an example. This is a blastocyst that's a part of the development of a human embryo. And you can actually see that it's only made out of a few cells. And what they have to actually do is get in there and remove the cells to be able to do anything with them. And as you probably guessed, 
that is going to kill the human embryo, which could later turn into a human fetus, which could later turn into a human. So a lot of people have a big problem working with embryonic stem cells. In fact, in America, if we are not allowed to extract and make new stem cell lines, it's against the law, and most other nations in the first world have similar laws. What is cool about them is they are limitless. They can become any type of cell, and they can reproduce an unlimited number of times. The only kind of cells in your body that can reproduce and make an unlimited amount of cells are embryonic stem cells, which you don't have anymore, sperm cells, which only half of you have, and cancerous cells. That's one of the weird things about cancer is this uncontrolled cell growth that has no limit. For all the other cells in your body, they can replicate about 50 times and then they die. They actually, the DNA uh, degrades and falls apart and then the cell can't live anymore and usually kills itself. We'll talk more about cell reproduction and uh, cancer stuff later. But what's really cool about these cells, these undifferentiated cells, they have some code in their DNA that based on how many of these cells are near each other, that determines what kind of cell they're going to be. So if they're in like, if there's like, you know, this number of cells, they'll turn into brain cells. And if they're in this number of cells, then they'll turn into muscle stem cells. So they start as these undifferentiated, totally pluripotent, limitless embryonic stem cells, then they can turn into the adult types of stem cells, and then they can further turn into like muscle cells and heart cells and this and that. So here's a good diagram that shows the whole thing happening. So you have your pluripotent, those are your embryonic stem cells, the immortal ones that can do limitless things. They can turn into different types of adult stem cells. Here they are. Here you have blood cells, muscle, nerve, bone, etc, etc. And then those blood stem cells, they can further differentiate to become like white blood cells, which will look like this when they're stained, or red blood cells, which will look like this uh, when they're unstained. They're actually red all the time, which is really kind of cool. They're also a lot smaller. So there's the breakdown of how your stem cells go from embryonic stem cells to adult stem cells to becoming all the different differentiated parts of your body, which many of them no longer are able to reproduce at all, and none of them are able to differentiate further. Here's an animation of some actual science footage. First there's one, if you click here, that gives you the breakdown of the whole embryonic stem cell studies. And then if you click in here, you will also see another one, actual footage of embryonic stem cells being embryonic stem cells differentiating into muscle cells and you actually get to see them contracting. They're on YouTube, so if you are watching on a device that doesn't let you click on the screen, click down in the description. The links are down there as well. So, the question is which is better? There is no limit on adult stem cell research and in fact we can still get these out of your body uh, at any time. However, the embryonic cells uh, has a high ethical cost for those high abilities of the cell to be immortal and to be able to turn into anything. And so there's a big debate over it, whether or not we should do it. And again, worth noting, we are allowed to do research on our existing embryonic stem cells, but we're not allowed to do research to culture new stem cell lines. So if they, like, for example, if we have a whole line of cells and they get sick with a bacterial infection and die, we've lost those, we can't culture new ones. What is cool is that the cells we do have are immortal and are able to reproduce an infinite number of times, so we could maybe get what we need out of that. But, you know, a lot of people say, why not just let us have more? We could do more. Just think of the possibilities. Uh, many of the world's most terrible crippling diseases where parts of your body are affected, like anything with a neurodegenerative disorder, anything where your spine Z gets all mashed up and you can't use it anymore, these embryonic stem cells could hold the key. The problem is at this point, we're not sure how to get it to differentiate in a controlled enough manner that we can do anything with it. So more research is still required. So again, the reason why there's such a high controversy is because the stem cells here are actually able to turn into little tiny fetuses here, which are actually able to turn into little tiny babies here. So a lot of people, you know, don't like that very much. That's the end of the flip lecture about uh, differentiation in stem cells. Don't forget to moodle it up in Moodle land. Thanks for watching, everybody.